Hello and welcome back to Russ Plays Games. My name is Russ, and as you can see, we are sitting in front of my paint station. Um, so today we're going to be finishing up this dude, okay, and um, and then on and then we'll probably try to get to our little guy. This is him with everything nice and dulled down. I know it still kind of looks a little bit bright, but um, I assure you that I put um, all that stuff all over the place, and then we're going to go back and we're going to do some highlighting, and uh, we're going to do, we're going to start making some colors a little bit brighter. But first, we're going to finish up our little guy here, okay? So, let me see here. So what we're going to do is, I don't think I have enough in there for, the, for tonight, because I'm probably not going to be filming the whole entire thing. I don't know if I have enough battery power, but we'll get through as much of it as we possibly can. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is, we're going to brighten back up his uh, some of his pants here. Um... Trying to avoid areas where there would be shade settled, um, and make sure that we try to um, just kind of brighten up some of the colors and some of the various things here so that we can kind of highlight this guy up just a tiny bit. Okay. Probably tell from the background, I am editing one of my episodes. I usually just kind of let it play, and that way, if I see anything in it or if I hear anything in it, then I can go back and look at it. Say, so what do I need to do to make it that much better? need to kind of, you know, provide some content every once in a while, otherwise some people are like, what happened to you? We don't know what happened to you. You disappeared. So I'm in the process of just trying to get some of this stuff out. And so, well, that's what we're doing. Okay. Now... One of the things that you can kind of look at when you do highlighting is take a look at the um, take a look at the fabric and see where the biggest highlights are going to be coming in. And that's where you're going to kind of highlight. Okay. And so you just want to make sure that when you highlight, that you're always highlighting on the parts where things are, where light's going to be hitting. You can highlight to your heart's content on a lot of models. There's a lot of different models that have different types of highlights and different things. So you can usually just go to town on stuff. Just make those highlights as bright or as, or as dull as you want. And so, as you can see, I just kind of highlighted the very back side of his pants. Okay, and then I highlighted a little bit on the front, because he's sort of, like, jumping forward. So the front of his pants aren't going to have a whole lot of highlights on it. Okay. And then, if you're really keen on it, 
you can take a teensy weensy bit of this. This is the uh, foliage color. Take just a teensy weensy bit of that. You can put it towards the ends. Um, what that does is it just adds a teensy weensy little bit of highlights. Okay. Just lightens it up. Just a teensy weensy bit. Okay. I know it's hard to see, but you can kind of see the highlight there. And then it's really hard to see on the back side there. But basically, right on the edge of this part, this little fold right here. Okay just on the very very tippy tippy tip okay you put a tiny little bit of it and it just adds that much more to it now if you wanted to if you had like a whole bunch of different gradients of color you could go um you know you could you could slowly build the colors out and and we're going to kind of do that because um, I have, because, you know, we have for our, for our little guy here, okay, we have our thicket, which is the base color, okay, which we're going to put back on certain surfaces, okay, to, to bring that color back up. Um, I have, and I mean, you're welcome to, you're welcome to get a different color or get a comparable color, but I have this Caliban green, which is... Um, about the same as the thicket, but it's a little bit brighter, so we'll probably use a little bit of that just to kind of see how it works. And then, of course, we'll come back up to the holly branch, and um, I might even use a little bit of this Cadillac green. I don't know yet. Um, I haven't made that determination, but then the very last color that we will put on is the foliage. Okay, So we're going to build that color out slowly, but the foliage is just going to almost be like a dry brush at the very end. And it's just going to hit the tips, tippy tips of certain things, just to give it that little bit, okay? So now, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to come back to his cloak, okay? And we're going to... Build the color back up on the folds, on the tips of the folds, I should say. And we're going to leave where the shade has settled, okay? So we're going to leave a little bit of this color where the shade has settled, okay? So where the shade is settled, we're not going to put any color. We're just going to leave that shade in there. Okay, and what we're going to do is, is on the, and so what we're doing here is, is we're just putting a little bit of color back up on the tippy tips of these folds in his cloak. Okay. What that does is that that just kind of brings the the main color up, okay? And so it just kind of gets everything nice and uniform and ready for our next layer. Okay, so we just want to make sure that we're that we're just kind of touching up some of these little tiny folds, okay? Because when we get done, 
with this, we're going to be getting our stuff together. We're going to make this stuff look amazing. Okay, with highlights and various things. Now it's not so not so much on the top. You don't need to do too much because the shade doesn't really settle too much into those. You you really want to get the folds on the back of the cloak. Okay, and it doesn't look like much right now because the color is so dark. Okay, I don't think I have any other blues. Those are the only blues I have. The only other blue I have is this one right here. Okay. So then, what we're going to do is, just to kind of add a little bit of, you know, kind of a pop of color, okay, what we're going to do is, we're going to take just a teensy-weensy bit of this, and we're going to run it. down the cloak and we're going to slowly very slowly build this color up okay because what we don't want to do is use too much of it and have it overwhelm okay we want it to be So what we're going to do is, is we're going to use this to just kind of start slowly building up some of that highlight on the cloak. Okay, so I'm just barely touching. Okay, because what you want is because this is a very thin paint. Okay, what you want is, is you want to use that to sort of diffuse the color along the folds, okay? If you start to lose the tip, wet it down, reform your tip, barely touch, okay? And then we're just going to go right back in, okay? Now, you don't have to do every single one you know what i'm saying like you don't have to go in there and like make it all look exactly the same it doesn't have to be okay what we're doing is is we're just artificially building highlight okay on the cloak and what we want to do okay So as you can see, we're slowly building up those highlights, okay? And now, <clears throat> what we do is, and you can do this with a lighter blue, or you can do it with a white. Or sometimes you can even take, like, a blue and a white, and you can mix them together. And I'm not much of a paint mixer, so kind of suck in that regard so I'm gonna go ahead and do this but basically what we're gonna do is is how we have most of these kind of going all the way up we're gonna start at about halfway maybe not even halfway okay and we're just gonna get the very edge okay and all this is doing All this does is it just kind of gives a little bit of a highlight to the highlight. 
okay, it's just going to give it that much more in terms of what we're looking for, okay. It's just going to give it that little tiny extra. And I know it's kind of hard to see because of my light and everything. I got a really harsh overhead light and I didn't bring the light over here to look at it with. But basically, when when you look at it, you want you want the highlight. Okay. So if you look at again, you look at like my skin, right? You look at the gradient coming down, okay? Up here at the top, you have the, the most amount of light hitting, okay? So that's going to be the brightest. The darkest is going to be down here in the recesses, okay? So if you look at, if you look at how my, when my shirt crinkles, okay? And you look, at, you look at the different folds, right? Okay? What we're doing is we're painting each one of these folds, artificially highlighting them to make them stand out because the shadows beneath are very dark. And so the most amount of light is hitting at the top, and the least amount is hitting underneath. Okay? And that's what we're trying to do. All right? We're just trying to build up that highlight. Okay? And so now we're going to come back in with a little bit of the thin white. And we're going to highlight up the face. And so as you can see, we're just kind of highlighting up a little bit of his face and trying to leave as much of it that we don't need in darkness so that it, you know, creates that sort of entropic look, okay? And now, let's do one last thing right before we get this guy. Let me see where we got here. All right, I'm just checking the tag. Taking the time, we got plenty of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, lead belcher and I'm going to paint up. Okay, I think that works. Get just a tiny little bit of this spot. I don't want to do too much with it because we don't want to ruin the effect, but I think we can do that. Okay. Because basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of highlighting up the blades, but I'm leaving that null oil in the crevices because that will leave it and make it so that it's not so um, that it's it's not so much. And unlike this guy, you will see that, you know, with the sword, it looks really dirty and grimy right now. But when we go back and we actually highlight the face and we highlight, like, the edges and stuff like that, the the parts that are that are deepened by, you know, like these little notches in the sword and stuff, those parts will become magnified, okay, because that's what the shade does. Now, I found out what these little tiny things on his back are. 
those are actually, I was looking at the figure, and those are actually supposed to be little plumes that come out the back that you're supposed to be able to paint. So they're like little things that just, they're, they're little shoots that come out his back right here, and they, and they stick out about, you know, yay far. Okay. Didn't get those. All I got was <laughs> the shield and his head. That's it. So, yeah, I, I kind of had to figure out what to do with those because I didn't know. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Okay, so now, <clears throat> for the dirt. Rawr. Might switch over to a little bit bigger brush for this. Just because I think it'll be a little bit easier. Um... So, make this like he's exploding up out of the ground. Now remember, how I paint something is not how you need to paint it. Should you ever get a hold of a figure like this, and you look at this and you go, wow, he painted it like that, but I think he'd look better this way. Paint it. Paint it however you want it. Don't let people tell you how to paint. There's not much for me to say right now because I'm just painting this base brown and that's about it. Um, yeah, it took me a long time to figure out what I was going to do with this guy because honestly, I was looking at him and thinking, what am I going to do with him? And sometimes you run into those kind of creative dead ends where you'll look at a figure for like a year and go, what am I going to do with this guy? or gal, or whatever, it doesn't matter. What am I going to do with this person? How am I going to make them part of my whatever retinue? <clears throat> now, one of the interesting things is I had a little bit of the paint hit his um, pants on the back side. But I realized that's probably not a bad idea, just because if he's exploding up out of the ground, his pants are probably going to be a little dirty. So if a paint paint hits, you know, if somebody's like, if you have like a zombie, or if you have somebody like exploding out of the ground, and, you, you know, you get a little bit of that um, paint on them, a little bit of the brown paint from the dirt on them, that's fine. I, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal.
Almost done here. Just kind of putting a little bit of the brown on the bottom of his pants. Okay. I think that'll work. Okay. All right. So I think what we're gonna do is, um, I have a little bit of time left. I think what we're gonna do is, um. Well, I think we're going to call that guy good. So, there it is. Again, um, with the base, I'll probably throw a shade on it. Um, and then I'll probably come back and just kind of highlight it. And then um, I might, like, like, just get the tips of the dirt. Because as it explodes, like, lighter colored dirt is probably going to be, you know, more light is going to be shining on the dirt that is up in the air rather than the dirt that's around the base. So we'll probably do that. Um, but other than that, yeah, uh, he's pretty much done. <laughs> I don't think there's much else that's <laughs> it's been going on with that because there's really not much else to say. Um, so, yeah. Um, so let me... Uh, let me just say that uh, I went ahead and uh, mod podged the heck out of this balsa wood base. I have yet to paint it, so I'll need to do that and then see if it takes the paint. And if it takes the paint, then I might just make some more cavalry bases. And if you want to see um, me paint some of these, um, because like I said, they're going to be used as wargs for my um, Lord of the Rings armies. Um, and then I have... See, these are the little goblin figures that Battlemasters has. And so I will probably paint him black and then repaint him in a more uh, orky color, like Sharku. You know, sort of that sort of a pale, um, like, I'm, I don't know if I have the paint right in front of me, but basically it's like a real, I have a, like a real pale jade color that I can use for him. Uh, but yeah, and he's going to sit kind of on that guy. Um, something like... Yay. I may get a different one. Uh, mostly because the person who... Um, so there's a little hole in the top. And even on... Uh, even on these horses... Um, there's a little, there's a little hole, and then there's a little, <laughs> this is kind of gross, but the, um, the gaming community <laughs> tends to refer to those as dicks or penises, um, and so somebody cut his off, so he doesn't fit in there that well, so I'm going to have to figure out what to do with him. You know, I'm going to have to figure out what to do with those guys for that. Um, I think what I might do is also um, next time is I'll probably get a start on our little, um, little dark slip there. And like I said, we're going to work on this guy. Um, we're going to kind of get him going here. Um, I do need to paint up his talons and his little fingernails and stuff like that as well. But we'll get to that next time. So, um... That's it for this half of the video. Um, when we come back, um, we will sit down and we'll start working on the rest. So, we will see you in just a second. And we're back. That's all. As you can see, I've base coated a couple things. So, um... I've, I've base coated our little uh, half of here, and I've base coated this guy, 
and uh, the base actually worked really well. Um, it took the paint very, very well. Um, I might have to just kind of, you know, spruce up the base just a tiny, teensy, teensy bit in a couple places. But other than that, I'm actually pretty satisfied with um, with the uh, level of coverage because this is what it normally looked like, and now this is what it looks like all the way around. So I'm pretty happy. I gotta say, it's pretty nice. All right. Um, what am I gonna do with you? All right. We'll start with the thicket because we need to grab. We need to hit a few places with the thicket. This is going to be a long process. Okay. So as you can see, I'm putting, I'm putting the the paint on the raised surfaces. So like his muscles, each one of his muscles, I'm putting you know, his elbow and like you know this the back of his hand here. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to get this color built up, but we want to leave as much of that paint, you know, the, the shade, as we can in the recesses. Okay. And now on his plates on his little scales up here. Okay. I'm not worried too much at this stage. I'm not worried too much about some of the individual scales where they might have some shades settled in a, a, you know an imperfection or something like that. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just paint the very, very flat parts of it. Okay. Because what we want to do is we want to highlight as much as possible. We just want to kind of build up some of that color back. Okay, and then let me get that 
side was in here. Just kind of get a little bit. I'm just gonna dry brush here. Not too worried about the fingers too much at this point, just because it's that's not the, the area that we're trying to get. So now what we're gonna do is, and I'm gonna try this on just a little tiny of space. Ah. Whew. That is, I haven't used this in a long time. Holy moly. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to see if this is better or darker. Hmm? Might be a little bit lighter. So now with this, what we're going to do is, is we're going to concentrate it just on the highlights. Okay. So this is the color that we're going to start building a little bit up and around. Okay. So... So like, I'm just hitting the very, very back, like each little portion of his, of his hand. I don't want it to be, so like, if he's, if he's holding onto something like this, and you can see that you have like the knuckle, and then there's the actual muscles and the, and the part, you know, the bones of your hand that's what I'm hitting, okay, because he's like, he's like this, and so you can see each individual bone, okay, and that's what I'm hitting is each individual bone in the hand, okay, and then what we're going to do is, is we're going to come over here, we're going to hit this a little bit, we're going to hit that a little bit, um, and then we're going to hit these little scales on his... Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, for the hand and for the scales, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a glob of paint, and I'm going to stick it, and I'm going to Now what we want to do is, is we want to build a color this way. Okay, so if you can see how I'm going with the scales, okay. Now at this stage it's not going to be very apparent, and it won't be until we hit the next stage with a little bit lighter color, okay. At this stage, it'll look a little bit lighter, but it's not going to be, like, so light that you're going to be like, oh, my goodness, that looks so much better. <laughs> okay. Now, interestingly, didn't actually hit his tail. <laughs> the last color. But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do this. Okay. It's 
very subtle at this stage only because this green is only like about one shade brighter than the other green okay and so we're not seeing too much of it at this point okay so now what we're going to do is <clears throat> and this is where things are going to start getting very very diffuse okay so actually what we're going to do is So I'm going to drop, drop a paint. I'm going to do since I've got this color where I continue doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to paint up a little bit of this color around the little skirt area. Okay, so I was just hitting his little his little green skirt there. I was just kind of highlighting that up. Now, it's going to be very, very difficult to see at this stage, but basically I've highlighted at the most this part and this part, okay? And what I'm doing is, is I'm taking, I'm, I'm dipping the, the tip of the brush in paint and then I'm kind of wiping the excess off so that there's not much paint okay and then I'm putting it on and then I'm letting it kind of diffuse over his you know over the area so that it brightens it but it doesn't overpower it okay end up doing here in a minute is I'm going to pull my for this one I'm only going to do the parts that are being hit and I'm just going to kind of hit those parts Okay, and then what I'm going to do 
is. Okay. We are going to take this guy. I'm going to dip him in. Just like we did the previous color. Okay. We're going to take out most of it. I'm going to rub it over. hands Here again, I'm going to go in one direction because what we're looking for is just hitting the tips. Okay. That's all we want to hit is the tips. And as you can see, we're starting to build that up nicely. Okay. In fact, here, let me, let me do this. kind of see that it's starting to build up nicely and you can start to see the highlights on the little, little parts okay and then if I come over here and I show it kind of from the side you can kind of see where um, where we're hitting it's kind of hard to see but you can kind of see where we're hitting those little bumps okay that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about those little bumps but you can kind of see where, if I pull the light out a little bit more, you can kind of see where they're now starting to get nice and light. Okay, that side's hard to that side's hard to see, but that's what we're looking for. Okay. So when I say that that's the type of highlight that we're going for, that's the type of highlight that we're going for. We're, we're basically building up the color. Okay. And we're building up that color to be We're building up that color towards the tips so that it stays nice and dark way down inside okay and then when we come back and we hit his teeth and we hit his you know different things those are going to become extremely well defined because all that shade will be down inside. So when we when we dry brush the teeth white and and we get the the, the um, his uh, fingertips and we get his um, toenails, they're going to look really good. Okay, um, because they'll look nice and crisp and white, which is what we want. From something like this okay now <clears throat> there's a couple ways of doing this um i have like i said i have this catalyte green i don't know how good it is um i don't know if it's going to be any better um here again i will try it on a tiny space and if it works great if not meh Because what we're going to do with it is 
kind of like what we did with the other green is we're just going to kind of make it if that makes any difference. I don't think that makes any difference at this point. Okay. So we're not going to use that. We're just going to go straight into the yellow green. <sighs> the foliage. Okay. Now with the foliage color, this one we're only going to want right in the middle. Okay. I don't want to do too much with it. This is the main highlight. And so we're just kind of getting just a teensy weensy little bit of it in certain places. Okay. Just to kind of add a tiny little bit of color, main color, okay, just a main kind of a highlight, and we're not going to use too much of it, okay, because what we're looking for is we're looking mainly for the actual highlight itself. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So if you think about, if you've ever taken an art class and you think about kind of how they taught you how to do kind of some highlighting and stuff like that, then that's what you're going to want to look for, is you're going to want to make it so that this color is just very, very light. But it's right in the middle. And then what you do for the skirt area, the, the little main skirt thing, is down and down towards the end, okay, you just kind of build up a little bit of this color. And then back here on the back, just right around here on the bottom, Okay, and build up a little bit of color around here, and then a little bit up on this fold. Just kind of highlight the fold, and then we're just going to kind of highlight right around there. And that's it. That's all you really need. Um, and it's very subtle color, but what we are going to do here again just to kind of get a little bit more of a highlight is we're going to take our dry brush, we're going to dip it in the paint, and we're going to, of course, you know, get most of it out. want these knuckles to be nice and nice and highlighted and the little bumps on either side of the leg we want those highlighted as well and then going to go 
these again start on the top and we're going to go in one direction okay and what this does is this is just going to highlight the very tip very tippy tips okay so we built up a color okay from base coat to a dry brush okay that really you know showcases the the models features okay that really make it stand out okay so let me grab my <clears throat> let me grab my thing here and then we'll probably call this an episode because I knew this one was going to take a while and so yeah this is <laughs> this one's going to take a while because what we're trying to do is we are trying to get you know, we're, we're trying to build this type of a color scheme. Okay. And so if you look at, if you look at the head, okay, if you look at the head, you can kind of see that kind of color that we built up. Okay. Where it starts really dark, way down in the recesses, and then it builds out. And we've done the same thing on the knuckles. Okay. And we've done the same thing on his little leg scales let me get rid of this side see we've kind of done the same thing on the leg scales now i did this once um on a uh if anyone knows the game dragon strike and i'll bring it out next time so that you guys can actually see it but basically i had this little troll and i tried to build um like he had little bony protrusions out the back kind of on his spine and so i tried to build those up and my problem was I killed the illusion because I painted too much in between. Like, I went back with, like, the base color, which is what I should have done in the beginning, is I should have gone through with the base color, and then I should have built it up and then just left it. But I went back through with the base color, and I painted in between to try to smooth out what was in between to try to give it a uniform color. But then it's like there are parts where you can actually see the physical brush stroke where you see like this beautiful gradient of color and then there's just like this brush stroke right in front of it. Just kills the illusion. So don't do that, okay? If you screw up, repaint it. Go back, paint it all one color, okay? You can go back and base coat it black again and then build up the base, throw on the shade, and then build up each color every single time. It will, it will really dramatically change everything that you do with it. Okay, so that's my technique for that. When we come back, we're going to hit the armor. Okay, we're going to hit all the armor pieces. And um, and then we'll hit the sword, and we'll get that done. And then um, he's pretty much done after that. So on the next one, we'll finish that, and then we'll probably get started on a Lola Dark Slip here. Um, and we will, uh, we will do some things. I will show you some convincing blood effects um, that I can do. Um, that, that I can show you so that it looks like she's actually killed somebody. Um, so we'll look at that next time. So smash that like button, hit subscribe, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think of the paint tutorial so far. And, um, you know, I, I'd love to hear, uh, your feedback, your, um, your stories on how my paint tutorial has helped you. So I look forward to hearing from you guys down in the comments. And as we say, we will see you on the next one.